Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome in. This is FST Fantasy Sports Today. My name is Matt Stryker. His name is Joe Pizapia, and this is the place if you want to dominate, whether it be in season long, DFS, straight up wagering, and honestly, Joe, with some of the conversations we have, just dominating life. This is the place. Very quickly, a reminder at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV. Just do yourself a favor, double check, make sure you're following along. A lot of information, and information is power. With that, I tag in the most powerful man I know, Joey P. What's going on, buddy? We're going to have a great show. Oh, I'm waiting here for the hot tag, and I just got it to start the show. It's unbelievable. Look at Matt Stryker selling for me in the middle of the ring there, taking all the (laughs) shots like the baby face he is, waiting for me to come in the ring and take care of business. Oh, Matty, it's a beautiful day. Hopefully everyone had a great Father's Day weekend last weekend. Now we're back to talking baseball, talking football today on the show. And, of course, where there's baseball, there's injuries. Injury returns and uh, another massive injury that impacted not only the race in the National League, but also numerous fantasy leagues across the globe. Oh, and the MVP race in the National League as well. So let's get to all of it. Let's start with Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole was back, uh, as I've been saying on this show for weeks and weeks, Matt. The time to trade Garrett Cole was after the big strikeout performances at the rehab starts because it's all upside. He makes his first return. He looks pretty good. Velocity down a little bit. That's a little concerning to me. You would think with the adrenaline pumping, the velocity would actually be Uh up a little bit. But who am I to judge someone else's velocity at the end of the day? However, (laughs) Garrett Cole has returned to the New York Yankees. So that's good news for their rotation, at least for now. Fantasy managers out there, though, you have to understand. You want to take a lesson just as recently as this year. How about Kyle Bradish, right? A guy that uh, elbow issues. Get all the return, came back, everything seemed like it was going okay. And I'm pretty sure this week, uh, what happened to him? Oh, yeah, that's right. He had Tommy John surgery. So I do not wish this on Garrett Cole. All I'm saying is this is a very tenuous road now. We are driving down with Garrett Cole. So if you're rostering him and you got him on the cheap, good for you. If you paid a King's Ransom in an early draft for him, you may have missed your window to deal him. I don't know. We'll talk more about that as the show goes on. Royce Lewis. Matt, there is nobody yes. hotter in baseball right now. Maybe right. Jackson Merrill, but I don't know. Royce Lewis can't be stopped. The guy's hitting home runs everywhere. I remember talking to Steve Gardner from USA Today on my show earlier this year, and he actually gave me Royce Lewis as a dark horse MVP candidate. And you have to wonder, Matt, if Royce Lewis was playing in April and May and looking anything even remotely close to what he's looked like so far since he's returned from injury, would Royce Lewis be up there in that conversation with the judges and the Sotos of the world? Absolutely, 100%. But so many strange things happen in baseball, which is why I'm glad we're having this conversation. So overall, here we are now coming towards the end of a month, heading into a hot month. This is where as a baseball wager, I think if you focus on the guys that are really hot, and Joe, you're so good at mentioning the answer, guys. You mentioned Jackson Merrill's a throwaway while we're talking about Royce Lewis. It makes someone go and research on their own because this is how we're making money. What Lewis is doing is fantastic, but what Cleveland's been doing has been overshadowing it. And that says a lot, especially in a market such as those. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And Royce Lewis, the one thing he has going for him as opposed to the Judges and Sotos, by the way, Aaron Judge hit his league-leading 28th home run uh, this weekend. <laughs> got 30 Not too July. bad. What is it? Oh, yeah, it's the 23rd <laughs> yeah. of June. Uh, right? But look, it's crazy. But the thing is, Soto and Judge, again, you know, when you have two guys who are great on the same team, sometimes they still vote for each other. Royce Lewis would be that guy in Minnesota. He is clearly the standalone best player. And if you look at the numbers coming into this weekend, look at that, 15 games, nine home runs in 15 games. That's absurd. 13 RBI over that span, 20 hits, 14 runs scored. Hitting above 370, I mean, he has been a revelation. He is that good. I would recommend buying high on Royce Lewis. He's not going to sustain a 377 batting average. (laughs) But if you're talking about like a long-term guy, like, but if you think about Royce Lewis's path has been kind of weird, right? Because he's had so many injuries, right? So if you're in those keeper dynasty leagues, there's a scenario out there where somebody's looking at this and going, wow, I can really sell Royce Lewis high right now. And I'd be on the other side. I'd sell him right now. (laughs) Uh, yeah but you know i mean even carlos santana is playing well because of it those are the things you have to take into consideration no no, seriously you have to think of the ecosystem right you write about it in the book and he has and he has a trickle down effect to everybody else which is really important the Mm, thing is you've also got a scenario here where 
there are some managers that look at this and say, he can't sustain it. He's been hurt so much. Maybe I can get so much back for him in a dynasty keeper elite format. Maybe he's the chip that I can move and move all my chips into the middle of that remaining circle in order to get to that championship this year. In which case, if I was a team in a rebuild, I'd be willing to buy high on Royce Lewis. Uh, Mookie Betts, unfortunately, low times for him. Mookie Betts is going to miss several months here with a broken hand. It happened last weekend. It was a terrible situation here. And this was a guy at the top of the board for the Los Angeles yeah. Dodgers, uh, top of the lineup, top of the MVP race there, along with Otani. Yeah. That number has changed significantly ever since this injury. And this is yet another of the big stars of Major League Baseball that we've lost here in this season, which is really tough. I mean, you know, you have a lot of these oblique issues, these elbow issues, all these things going on, lots of hamstring problems. This was a freak accident there, you know, got hit on the hand with a pitch. Next thing you know, Mookie Betts is going to miss significant time. So this is a tough one because the Dodgers have had a tough run here. Yeah. Walker Bueller goes on the IL. He hasn't been good. You lose Mookie Betts. Are the Dodgers at a little bit of a weak point here in the middle of the season, do you think? Right question to ask. It's been so hard to wager on them with all the question marks that start to come up. And if you've noticed, the games that they should be winning handily, like a lot of times you'll get teased on Dodger run lines and they'll, they'll flirt. They were in plus money for a while, but they'll flirt with plus money and the Dodgers don't cover. And then on the other side, they're beating teams seven to two, but the money line is just too egregious for anyone to get in there. They are really a very difficult team. Yeah, I do think that they're, you said it best, right? Built for 162, not for seven, implying that postseason mm-hmm. they, they don't scare you. I don't even know if they're built for 162 at this point, as I say. No, well, as long as, <laughs> look, the injuries are tough. Max Muncy's still working his way back, but again, seems like a very slow road for him. This is now months for Muncy. Uh, so <laughs> it's also what happens when you have a very top heavy team. You know, you have the Otanis yeah. and Betts and Freeman, right? And we talked about this, you know, the rest of this lineup is kind of mid a little bit. Then you get, mm-hmm. you know, past the six, seven, eight, nine spots, right? Ah, to Oscar's played very well. That's been a saving grace for them. There's probably enough still on this team to get them obviously through the playoffs pretty well or into the playoffs, I should say. But it's going to be an interesting summer to see the Dodgers and see if they go out there and acquire some more help in the meantime on the cheap. Uh, an unfortunate set of circumstances for the Toronto Blue Jays, Bo Bichette also out on the aisle with a calf issue and these are very tricky so this could be a while he was that piece that people were talking about matt that could be dealt now toronto can't even do that because he's on the il for a couple months so who knows how this is going to work out the blue jays are kind of now in it by default but i guess the real question is can they compete without bo bichette who's going to miss significant time now no it's been such a disappointment and i love all my friends and listen toronto i love you i've spent time in orange but look at you want to see what you're supposed to be look over at edmonton Look at what that city has done, how they've Mm -hmm. rallied. Listen, I understand the Maple Leafs let you down, but you don't come out for the Jays. And again, I'm not my T.O. fan. I'm a big rush guy. Please don't beat me up. But I understand. But I think they need to rebuild that team. I think they definitely need to do something because it's been such a disappointment with all that talent, Joe. Yeah, I agree. Uh, And going back to Garrett Cole real quick, too. You know, that first start, he did have five strikeouts. Um, People will look at the line and say, okay, you know, that looked good. Five strikeouts, one walk. I want to keep a close eye on that velocity. Again, the velocity was not where it was just the week before. And that is troubling to me, especially in that home ballpark. First start back. To me, the adrenaline pumping, that was a weird signal. Perhaps it's a blip on the radar. Again, we see this with guys ramping up in spring training. Sometimes the velocity will move back and forth. This is kind of like being cold spring training. But because of the elbow issues that he's been dealing with, it's a little bit of a different scenario. It's something that you Hmm. have to be a little bit more concerned with. And I do think you have to consider right now some of the deals that might be on the table. we got a great show for you today. Amazing stuff. We're going to hit waiver wire. We're going to make trades. We're going to do all that stuff. When we come back here, we're going to talk about the splits again because last week we talked about it, how you can invest in them, play yes. some unders, play some overs because some players just are better at home than they are on the road, and sometimes they like to be away from home. We'll tell you who they are when we return on FSD. gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. It's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The early line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today. Matt and Joe with you here, giving you everything you need in order to dominate, whether it's season long, DFS, straight up wagering, we've got you covered. Overall, the ideas, the concepts that Joe and I speak of, that's how we approach everything in life. But here we're going to focus it down onto baseball, later on some football. Joe, of course, the author of the Fantasy Black Book. It is available now. It's changed the way people have just looked at sports. And honestly, I think it should be in the self-help section. I really do. Because if you can apply <laughs> some of the things that you do, the way you break things down in sports, how to position players in this ecosystem, mm. and apply it to life, I think you've got something here. But right now, it's time for Splitsville. And I'm not talking about relationships. I'm talking about the differences that some Major League Baseball players present when they are home when they are away joe let's begin yeah i mean never be splits fill for us we're gonna stay oh. together forever i mean this might be the second longest relationship of matt striker's life i'm just saying like uh, me, it's me right behind the li- actually yeah it's very close actually i'm, I'm not going I'm going there and she's watching I'm, so let's she, let's she, just she, talk she about loves me and she knows that i'm gonna <laughs> and when i come over i bring all kinds of fun things to the house for the kids i will cook for everybody i will bring <laughs> Uh, homemade cookies, all that thing. I'm a wonderful guest, but Matt never invites me. Jared Jones, uh, he is also more of a uh, a guy that's better suited to being in the house than necessarily away from it. Look at the home road splits this year for Jared Jones. A 2-1-4 ERA at home, a 1.10 whip. On the road, a different story, a 5-5-9 ERA, 1.16 whip. So the whip is still good. The ERA very high. And recently, Jared Jones has had some hiccups, right? This Recent start, a good one yesterday. That's a good signal. Looking at the innings totals historically for Jared Jones, the high point for him is about 125, okay, so in terms of professional innings. So that means that he should be pretty good this year to get up to maybe that 135, 145 mark, depending on where the Pirates are in the standings and how much they want to push him. But Major League innings are a little bit different. The stress level is a little bit different, right? So I think it's something to look at, Jared Jones, when you look at the splits, you look at some of the recent outings, And you ask yourself, maybe it's time to start shopping Jared Jones because maybe as he gets more exposure to the league, perhaps some teams are catching up to him. Maybe it's not fatigue that's setting in. Maybe it's just the league saying, okay, this is what Jared Jones does well. Let's try to take it to and make adjustments. And sometimes league will make adjustments to pitchers and hitters. And then the better ones make adjustments back. Jared Jones looks like he's made some adjustments back in his most recent start, but the two before have been a little shaky. So, 
interesting spot here with him looking at these splits. But Jared Jones certainly has been a guy that's already given you tremendous value from his ADP. So you're loving life already. But now you have to look at the latter part of the season and say, is this a guy that I believe in September you know, August, where you might be in some of those playoff scenarios in certain fantasy leagues. And that's a real other question. Plus, from a wagering standpoint, when this guy's at home, it's still a really good bet. So we talked about how our sports strategies can spill over into life. Let's use it. So how does something new, the new kid in class, new person at work, some type of new device Mm -hmm. or toy in your home, how does that impact everything else? Paul Skeens is that new thing in any way, shape, or form. You have to believe that there is a ripple effect that affects Jared Jones. Now, I'm not saying that he pitches differently, so differently at away versus at home. He uses his fastball differently. But just overall, from a wagering standpoint, I bring it up because as of this recording today, Skeens will pitch, and I think is over seven and a half on the Ks. So these type of conversations are much bigger to how do we wager? How do we wager in life? How do we wager here? Jones, the home road splits, I'm not ready to trade just yet. Again, I'm talking to the sixth place in a 12-team league manager. I'm not ready to go yet, but Joe, you're right. And we have to attack these things from a wagering perspective. So obviously, the next time we see Jones on the road, we're going to look at things like the implied run total or maybe something to that effect. Let's go the other way. A guy that is pitching today, I believe, is Bryce Miller. He is pitching at home against Miami. And at home is where you want to be because away, it's just, it's no, it's not Miller time. What do you got? It is not Miller time. Uh, Away, it's 5.5 for ERA. The whip is still reasonably good at 1.23, but at home, look how good this guy has been. Unbelievable. 1.82 ERA, a 0.83 whip. He has been filthy, nasty. All of those adjectives describe Bryce Miller in Seattle this year. And one can only hope that whenever Seattle adds somebody, for the love of God, to this lineup to help support Julio Rodriguez, please, will you do this sooner than later so I can stop talking about it because everyone's sick of hearing me talk about it. It can only get better. You see this guy at home, you're running to the money line. You're running to that run line. You're running to the unders on the earned run set at two and a half because that's where this guy has been all year. And when he's got cookie matchups against teams like the Marlins, you take advantage of him. Now, when you're looking at some of the hitters, too, Splitsville always enters into things. Some guys are just hitting better at home than on the road. If you look so far here, O'Neill Cruz going back to Pittsburgh, another guy, too. At home this year, a 282 batting average, an 892 OPS. Everything looks great for O'Neill Cruz until he has to pack a suitcase. I don't know what's going on. He doesn't like hotels. He doesn't like the food on the road. 214 Mm -hmm. batting average on the road with a 562 OPS. That is not good. That's not getting the job done. So what do you do? You look at the total base props. You look at those situations at home. You bet the overs. You bet the unders when he's on the road until things change. And when you look at those opportunities there for Cruz, look, right now it's very clear this guy is struggling on the road. Sometimes, you know, hitters get very comfortable in their home ballparks with the hitter's eye and some other things like that. Cruz is one of those guys so far that hasn't quite figured out how to bring that success on the road with him. He's still a young player. He'll figure it out. One more guy to talk about, too, Brandon Nimmo, who's usually a pretty consistent guy. This year has been very inconsistent when it comes to the home road splits. Take a look at Brandon Nimmo so far this year. At home, in front of the New York crowd, it'll make it grimace, folks. 205 (laughs) batting average, a 600 OPS. A 286 batting average on the road and a 979 OPS. Nearly 1,000 OPS with a 416 OBP. Brandon Nimmo is a guy right now that if you see the Mets on the road, you are running to the props for Brandon Nimmo. He has been that good. Whatever reason, he's pressing at home. It's not a good scenario. You look for the unders when you're at home. And also, when you're looking in fantasy, you're also trying to figure out, okay, I've got a bunch of home games this week for Brandon Nimmo, and I got somebody else who's right. pretty good. Maybe I'm taking advantage of that. Maybe O'Neill Cruz is going to sit on a seven-game road trip for the Pittsburgh Pirates until he figures things out. We have enough data now to say it's not a blip on the radar. We know who these guys are so far, and they've showed us some versions are better than others. We return more FST right here on Sports Grid. We'll be right back after this. Says Miami is going to win, and you should take the over. 
Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. And it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. Great, great. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today. My name is Matt Stryker. His name is Joe PCP. It just helps in life if you speak like this. I don't know why. Uh, it is time now for a whole you possessed by Jerry ass. Lewis from the 50s. Like, what, where's the hey lady coming out of your mouth? What the hell's going on there? Hey lady, oh, the fantasy sports today. I mean, nobody gets that reference, but you are seriously. I'm, like, I'm just gonna let you run with this. You're doing well, Jerry you, Lewis. Why are you talking like that? What happened? I don't know. I'm excited. Mind. It's time for hold or drop. I get excited here. Listen. We've been talking about on this show how we can apply our sports theories to life. Isn't it nice? That I'm excited to have a conversation with someone in a day where discourse is absolutely dead. How often do we put our heads down and go, oh, I don't want to talk to that guy, but I'm happy. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm happy to, to talk to our listeners and our fans out there, our viewers about sports. Holder drop is exciting for me. I'm in a lot of season long fantasy leagues. I still play DFS and I wager every single day. So these conversations really help me. So I'm excited. Don't rain on my parade. <laughs> Also, a song from the fifties. There it is, full circle, ladies and gentlemen. Matt is Matt is stuck. By the way, stay tuned after the show. Matt's going to do a whole couple hours there on the TMC. All right, the TCM, a Turner Classic Movies. That's what it is, Turner Classic Movies. You're going to do, you know, behind the scenes of some black and white films. But let's talk about the the drop guys, the hold guys. <laughs> We're in situations with some of these players at this point where there's other guys on the waiver wire. There might be some saves this week on the waiver wire to pick up, and you just don't know what to do with certain players. We're going to help you. Chris Paddock was on the Splitsville last week because we're talking about the home road ERA. One was around two. The other was around eight. Not good. <sighs> also not good, his ERA for the month of June, Matt. It is up to 7.79. Seven, not good. Over his last two starts, he's barely put together six combined innings. It's been a rough go for Chris Paddock. Eight earned runs over his last two starts. If you go back to the month of May – pretty good he had a 10 strikeout performance a 3-6-0 era over that span it's a really solid month of may but things are really falling apart for chris paddock which don't surprise me he's been a two-pitch pitcher his whole career he is a little bit predictable and i think now once again after some moderate success i think the book is now out on him after the month of may and people are attacking him in the proper way and that's been bad for chris paddock so for me i'm out uh very shark tank here this morning i'm gonna drop Chris Paddock. I think I'm done. I think there's other guys in the waiver wire. They're going to be more interesting, could potentially help you a little bit further down the trough. So to me, I don't look at Paddock as a guy that, you know, if you got a good month of May, Adam, that's fine. Uh, the month of April was not good. 
So you're going to deal with that where a guy's going to go up and down in terms of ERA, also up and down in terms of home and road. It's too much to manage. It's too much of a headache. I have no hair to begin with to pull out. Yeah. So that's it. We're done with Chris Paddock. Okay. How about you? Are you holding on or are you drop Chris Paddock? In a day, a time where I said that discourse is dead, let me poke it with a stick and say, do something, do something. So let me give context, because I think that's what's missing in this world is context, okay? The context is I'm speaking to a 12-team league sixth place manager. What kind of pitching is out there on your wire? What are you looking for? Do you look at your team maybe every 14 days and look at it overall statistically and see where you're lagging behind other teams and why you remain in sixth place? If that's the case, then maybe Chris Paddock can still give you something if you use him correctly. But to Joe's point, at this point in the season, I believe if you've been watching baseball and you pay attention to shows like this and you listen to guys like Joe, you know your waiver wire. You know exactly what's out there. Mm-hmm. So, yes, Chris Paddock is certainly droppable, as is, I think, this next guy just due to, to circumstance and injury. <sighs> yeah, this is unfortunate. We Sorry. waited for Jason Dominguez to come back. He came back. He's been lights out at double A, got moved up to triple A, lights out there. We thought maybe he'd see some time with the Yankees, but unfortunately, he's going to see a lot of time on the IL. He's going to miss two months here with an oblique strain. Once again, uh, the exit velocity world uh, takes another one of our favorite toys away from us everyone's swinging so hard to try to get that exit velo and they're all on the il uh dominguez look it's the end of june so what maybe the end of august maybe we're not guaranteed a spot for him you can drop him especially in shallow leagues and then hector neris another guy too where right now with neris uh, he's blown a bunch of saves this month i think it's time to cut bait Uh, and i don't even want to go right to chicago Instead of that mess, I'm going to go to a clearer situation, which is Chad Green, who is still available in more than 50 okay. leagues right now. Uh, Jordan Romano experienced a setback with his elbow. Mm-hmm. Yimmy Garcia went to the IL. So Chad Green's the next man up for saves in Toronto. Drop Neris, add Green. That's the route you want to take here as far as trying to look for some save help. When we look ahead, of course, to next week, we've got to look behind us and realize who are some of the players that have had the best couple weeks here that are red hot. And who are the players that are having some bad times out there that we want to bet against? We're going to tell you who they are when three up and three down comes at you right after this. Don't go anywhere. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. going to be remembered it will be a lasting image from the 2024 united states open just like bryson dechambeau's 55 yard bunker shot we love big time winners like you win a championship we want to hear from you you get the stage sometimes it's emotional it's a great watch we know we also love the losers who said you know what i just can't believe i folded down the stretch let me face the music here you sort of get a new light there the early line only on sports grid Great, great. 
All right, welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today. You know, a lot of times we can ponder over what's truth and what's not, what's real and what is perceived. But statistics, the immutable laws of math, Joe, always clear up the waters. And if something looks like a duck and walks like a duck, chances are it's a duck. The point I'm trying to make is the back of the baseball card really matters, especially when you hold it up against the back of the baseball card of the world, which makes no sense at all. You look at certain guys and you see in this three up, three down, certain guys I think are really investable season long. And I'd like to start there with one particular player that over the last 15 days has truly proven his worth. Yeah, it's Stephen Kwan, who I think is a player that – it grossly underappreciated. Oh I understand gosh. he's not the greatest power hitter. Uh, look at the last two weeks, too. You want to talk about how red hot he's been? He's got two homers in the last two weeks, but it's the 11 run score. It's the 5 12 batting average. It's the lost art of contact that Stephen yeah. Kwan brings you. And I understand in a roto format, look, he's going to give you high average, so you take that. Maybe you take some lumps there with the power. He's got some speed. Uh, he's going to score runs, but the batting average is a harder thing to come by nowadays. So you look at the combination, you say, okay, this is a three category player. However, if you're playing in a head-to-head points format uh, or any kind of points league, it's a really intriguing player because he is one of these guys that's going to just continue to kind of peck you to death, right? He is going to get on base. He's going to make contact. And those those moments are going to turn into runs. He's a player you look for the total base prop. He's a player that you look at and you say, uh, what's the run scored here over under for him today? Oh, it's 0.5. Let's go with the over here because Stephen Kwan has been one of these guys that's just been not only red hot, but also his game – is a little bit more slump proof than others because of the lost art form of contact, putting the ball in play, using your speed, being smart, hitting the ball in the opposite field, looking at the situational hitting moments, right? There's a guy on first base. You're trying to hit the ball behind him, trying to move him right necessarily over to second or a guy on second base. You want to hit the ball to right That's field, tough. right? All those things. When you watch Stephen Kwan play baseball, it's ingrained in him. And it's something that I think you see in Korean baseball, you see in Japanese baseball, the art of baseball still exists in those places to a much higher degree than it does in Major League Baseball now. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but it's not nearly mm-hmm. to the same degree. Guys aren't willing to sacrifice themselves and their stats quite as much as they are for the good of the team to move runners over, to drive runners in necessarily the way that they want to, right? You know, sack flies aren't as sexy as the three run home run. But, you know, runs help win games. And Stephen Kwan is a guy that generates runs. Whether you like it or not, it's not from a power standpoint, but he's generating runs from a contact standpoint. It's something to really consider the value of a player like that. Absolutely. You hit the nail on the head, especially. So I like to use the T-Bops, which is total bases, OPS. Look at a guy's OPS, and you can correlate it to a total base prop. You can constantly see Stephen Kwan at over one and a half total bases. If your book, and I know that BetMGM does this, the hit, run, RBI, the Herbie, that's another one where you can really find some good plus money. And Stephen Kwan is it cut from that mold that I really like in baseball. And look at Cleveland, right? Jose Ramirez, I think, is always in the conversation as one of the best players in baseball. But a lot of people outside of the area go, huh, who? Same thing with Stephen Kwan. Let the world sleep on these players while we take advantage. All right, let's head out to San Diego. Who else is doing well? Jackson Merrill is doing very well and he is getting into that rookie of the year conversation. We'll talk more about that as it goes on, but look at the last two weeks for this guy, six homers, nine RBI, 10 runs scored, hitting 327 with a 365 OBP and an 1141 OPS Jackson Merrill along with Royce Lewis might be the two hottest baseball guys right now on the planet. And Merrill was a player we did talk about going into the year. He made the team. It was not surprising, but uh, a pleasant Look, actually, something maybe we saw, okay, well, look at that. Jackson Merrill makes his team. Let's hope that he sticks. And he's taking his lumps a little bit, right? It wasn't like gangbusters out of the gate for Jackson Merrill. He's just kind of keeping pace. But whatever is clicked for him, it has. And I don't think you're looking to sell high from him. I think he's a player that is not going to maintain this pace, of course. But looks like a player that's going to be very productive. Uh, My colleague, the Welsh, who hosts uh, the Fantasy Pros MLB show with me, he was his rookie of the year choice going into this year. He's got a very expensive ticket there for him. And all of a sudden now it's looking really intriguing on that National League side for Jackson Merrill. He's got to compete with Imanaga. He's got to compete with Skeens. But the one thing he's got on both of those guys, Matt, he's an everyday player. And Skeens at some point is probably going to hit an innings bounce there where you go, okay, you're going to get shut down. What happens there? Imanaga, a rough start for him. It was kind of the theme of the week. 
Wheeler, Scooble, Imanaga, the guys who've been untouchable, all got touched pretty hard this week. So uh, Merrill's one of these guys to definitely watch, and the number's still very good. But my goodness, has this guy been hot for San Diego? Yeah, you, know, you talk about fundamental baseball, and you have the luxury in the background of having played and having good coaches. I watched yesterday for a little bit, and Merrill had a 12-pitch at-bat that he finally won with a bloop single just out yeah. to short center. And it was just so nice to watch just that whole entire thing unfold. All right, it's been nice to watch this pitcher unfold, and this team really needs it. I'll let you lay it out. Uh, Hunter Brown, who people wanted to drop in April mm-hmm. and May, who people could not figure out what was going on. Well, he's figured it out. Over his last three games, 19 innings, he's 3-0, 22 strikeouts, four walks, a point for seven ERA, a .95 whip. Those are stunning numbers. That is a huge turnaround for Hunter Brown. This is why you have patience with younger players, even when they get off to bad starts. And how important has he been, Matt, when you consider Verlander with that neck issue? You have Christian Javier go out for Tommy John. You know, Framer Valdez had some, you know, if he starts in there in between. The Astros have desperately needed somebody to step up in this void at that pitching staff, and this guy has been that dude. And Hunter Brown, because he was dropped so much in so many leagues, he's still available in about 35% of leagues right now, which is kind of stunning when you think about this run that he's been on because people just weren't buying it. I think you got to buy it at this point. And the Astros are kind of hanging on there. They're you know, just right at the edge of the ledge. But Hunter Brown's been a big reason why, and I think it's safe to go out there and roster him again and throw him out there, especially if the matchups are to his favor. Brown has really turned things around and hopefully this continues and he has a really solid second half that he can build on for 2025. All right. From the ups, we go to the downs. Let's see what Joe has in store. Mm. I I can almost hear a smile, if that's possible, Mm. coming to Joe's face. What's making you so happy? Yeah, it's like, you know, when the Grinch, you know, when he gets that mm, idea that goes up and that's Get how out of I feel. my head, Joe. I told you last week. <laughs> I'm not one to say I told you so. But I told you yes. so. <laughs> I told you. Trade Nolan Gorman away. Home run or nothing. Well, it's been a whole lot of nothing, hasn't it? Hitting under 200 this month. A point nine zero nine four batting average over the last two weeks. Gosh. That's it. He's got 23 strikeouts in his last 15 games. A 208 slugging, a 123 OP, uh, I mean, uh, OBP. Nolan Gorman. <laughs> you would have been right. A 123 run. OPS. What is it, 330? I, 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 I just, it's ridiculous. Well, the OPS is 331, so it's not that right. far off. So all jokes off. aside, <laughs> no, this is who Nolan Gorman is, okay? He is Joey Gallo at second base. Stop it. Uh, another right. guy who is who's also, after a great start, <laughs> unfortunately got hurt. Michael Conforto has not quite been the same guy since his return over his last 15 days. One homer, 16 strikeouts, hitting .073 with a .327 OPS. Conforto's an interesting guy to watch and see if people drop him. I would pick him up, too. He's not this bad. He's not as good as he was in April. He's somewhere in between, and that's probably a pretty decent player, especially if you're missing guys in the outfield. And another one we just can't seem to figure out, Matt, is Luis Castillo, right? Like Pablo Lopez, we keep waiting for that run to happen. Yep. And Castillo, over his last three games, 16 innings, 12 earned runs, 18 hits, a 6.75 ERA, a 1.38 whip. Now, I'd be buying on Castillo, and I'd be buying on him because some of his worst starts this year have all come against the Cleveland Guardians. So it looks like the Guardians certainly have his number more than anybody else. But Castillo, again, too good of a pitcher. If they could just get some more offense here into this team, they've got a good pitching staff. Miller, Castillo, Kirby, Gilbert, they've got all the goods. Get some more offense. Go get Luis Robert. Go get a Pete Alonso. Whoever is out there at some point, add these guys, please. Help this team out because this team, this team is built for seven. The problem mm-hmm. is they need some help in the 162 get to get yeah. to the playoffs. <laughs> That's the problem here with the Seattle Mariners. But again, those are the guys having some bad times. Nolan Gorman, sorry, you might have missed the window. The worst of times. Castillo, <laughs> the window is open to make a trade and buy low. Speaking of buy low, we come back. We're going to buy low on some more guys. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. 
But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York team has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. And it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. <laughs> Welcome back into FST Fantasy Sports today, where the conversations that go on during the break carry over into the show, because why not? We're all family. Speaking of which, a tip of the cap to everyone behind the glass on the other side, producers, graphics, everyone out there. You guys make this show go in addition to the fan base. You put up with the nonsense that Joe and I bring, mostly me, but the nonsense that Joe and I bring, and we appreciate it. And hopefully, once you squeeze it out and you wring it out, you get some good entertaining information. It's time now for buy low. And Joe, you've been on point the past few weeks with a lot of these names. And I find myself during the weeks after you mention them, seeing these stats change or hearing these players' names and going, ah, look at that. Joe is right again. So where are we going? Be like water, right? That's what yeah, Bruce, Bruce Lee said. said. Yeah. yeah, sometimes the water recedes. Sometimes it comes crashing against the shores. Right now, Royce Lewis, Jackson Merrill, they're crashing on the shores. But right now, Adolis Garcia is receding a little bit. And the power numbers are still on the year. Pretty good. 13 homers, 41 RBI. Okay. But the problem is, you look at the month of June here. He has got one home run. He has four RBI. He is hitting a buck 54 in the month of June. In the month of May, he hit 165. Also, not a good month. But if you dial it all the way back to April, things were great. He was hitting over 300, which is also not Mr. Garcia either. Right. So there's a guy in between that is the real Adolis Garcia, and this guy is going to show up sooner than later. The weather's getting warmer. Balls are starting to fly a little bit better. We're seeing home runs tick up. Not for Garcia yet, but it's going to come. So this is the perfect buy low candidate for me. We talked about a Rosa Rain a lot, but Garcia is another outfielder too, where things have not gone well for him batting average wise. He expected batting average is higher. It will come back around. People do tend to play to the back of their baseball card. Uh, and Garcia is a player right now that's had a bad stretch. And he's always been kind of a streaky guy. But normally we get that hot streak in between some of the down streaks. But this has been an extended cold streak. This is not one month now. It's two months under 200. That means Garcia can be had for pennies on the dollar potentially. And that's a player that I want to invest in because we know as cold as he is, he's a guy that can hit seven, eight home runs in a month. So I want this guy on my roster and I love the cost of him. So I am buying Garcia. Matt, did I sell you on the notion of buying Garcia? <sighs> It's it's rough to be chasing, I don't want to say empty power, but half full power at this point in the season. I would imagine any good manager will have drafted 
this way and pick this already up on their waiver wire. If you're in a position now where Adelis Garcia is the focal point of a trade that you're making, I think there's a bigger conversation to have. Overall, you look at Texas, and I think there's a bigger conversation to have. And actually, this next player, I would assign myself a bit more to your buy low. Uh, it'll all depend on what I'd have to give up for Garcia, though. But let's talk about this next player also on Texas. Look, just like Garcia, who's had three straight really productive years of 27 more home runs. In fact, last year, Garcia hit 39 home runs. Just want to put that out there. Mm-hmm. He's driven in 90 or more. Like, he has driven in a lot of runs. Then you got Marcus Simeon, another player who is spectacular uh, and probably one of the more underappreciated players in baseball the last few years. Uh, he has gone from a 45-102 season, a 26-83 season, a 29-100 season. This year, he's had 11 homers and 43 RBI. Okay, but the problem is, if you look at the game log right now, how things are going in the month of June, it's kind of a little lackluster in the power. Only two home runs in the month, only driven in nine runs. I think collectively, the Rangers are struggling a little bit right now, Yes, which is great because you know this and I know this. The teams that go to the playoffs, win World Series, they tend to be a little sluggish sometimes at certain points in the regular season, but they know what it takes to flip the switch. Max Scherzer right. comes back today, toes mm-hmm. the rubber for them. The intensity is going to get... I think flipped a little bit more in Texas when Max Scherzer shows up, right? Corey Seager has dealt with health issues all year because that's what Corey Seager deals with. Um, Wyatt Langford hit a home run this weekend. Yeah, Langford's starting to heat up a little bit. I think collectively the Rangers are a fascinating buy low because they know what it takes. And this is about the time in July, right? Where July 4th, you got to flip the switch and play your best baseball. So I think they're capable of that. And Marcus Simeon, again, a player that I look at Hitting 239 in the month of May with a 670 OPS. That's not Marcus Simeon. Starting to show a little bit more signs of life, 265 with a 772 OPS in the month of June, but the power is lagging behind. This is a player that you know is going to eventually get on a hot streak, and when he does, he is one of the best hitters in baseball. So Marcus Simeon has proved that, and I would be buying Marcus Simeon right now, buying the Rangers collectively, yeah. Langford, Garcia, even Scherzer to a certain degree, Simeon mm. in that grouping as well. There's a lot to like here about Texas because I do think Texas is going to be one of those teams that is going to, again, show up when it counts. And around the All-Star break is when it counts for those teams. And then there yes. is a lag. There is a hangover. Because remember, this team played well into October. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a tired factor that shows up too. No, you're a thousand percent right. And uh, with the time that we have remaining, we'll talk about two outfielders, but I would be more inclined to grab a package with a guy like Marcus Semi. And to me, there's a lot of value Still there. A lot of meat left on the bone. All right, we'll go to Seattle, and then we'll end it up in Chicago. I won't tell you which side, though. Joe, take it away. I'm still buying Julio Rodriguez. I, I'm just buying him. He's too good of a player. Uh, they're just not pitching to him. Agreed. And when you don't have to pitch to a guy, that's the one guy in the order who can beat you. Eventually, this is going to change. And when that other back comes in, and it will come in here, things will be different for him. 264 batting average, seven homers, 29 RBI, a 665 OPS. That's not what you signed up for for Julio Rodriguez this year. A little line of protection goes a long way. He needs it desperately. They have to go and help this kid. He doesn't have anyone around him. And this is true of any team and any great player. Judge and Soto feed off each other. You know, whenever Mm -hmm. you have good line of protection, that's going to help the other guy. And Luis Robert, who's that guy that I want desperately, is another player that has not played anywhere close to what he's capable of. Luis Robert, again, dealing with injuries this year. He has been a guy that's been sluggish to come back here. He's in under 200 on the season, seven home runs. But I'm looking at him also as a player that's finally healthy, that in the month of June still might be hitting, you know, a, a buck 80. But that's not who Luis Robert is. If you go back and look at last year's stats, Luis Robert is the guy that hit 38 home runs last year. Okay. Luis Robert stole 20 bases last year. He had 264. He is a far better player than he's shown you so far, and he will get better as the season goes on, as his health improves. So buy these guys, and these are four studs that you can buy cheap right now that can really help you in the second half. Buy into the back of the baseball card. These guys have shown you who they are, so believe them. Now, on the flip side, there's some other guys that have shown you who they are, too, that you might want to get rid of. We return, we're going to talk about the guys to jettison from your lineups, the sell highs when we return on FST.
Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. And it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back into FSD Fantasy Sports Today. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzapia talking everything you need in order to dominate, whether it's season-long DFS, wagering, baseball, football in a little bit. We've got you covered. Remember, Joe is the author of the Fantasy Black Book. It's out there now if you're getting ready for your upcoming football season. Remember, 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 failure to prepare is preparing to fail. With that said, Joseph, it's time to sell high. And while the category name sounds intriguing, this is about selling players that are at their apex. So just calm down, Mm -hmm. kids and elderly people with glaucoma. Where do you want to go? Uh, I, well, I, I want to go to the store and get some of that stuff you're talking about. But in the meantime, <laughs> I'm here doing the show, so we're going to do this. Uh, Jared Jones has been terrific this year. We talked about him earlier in the show. Uh, the splits have not been terrific. The five ERA on the road, not exactly what you're looking for. The the, the home ERA has been brilliant. Yeah. Overall in the year, 366 ERA. He is five and six, right? We expect that. The Pirates are going to be an up and down team, young team, still figuring things out. 93 strikeouts so far in the year, the 1.10 whip. It's been very good. But what's happened recently, again, I'm starting to be concerned with, has the league started to catch up a little bit to Jared Jones? Which is, I think, a very easy question to ask oneself. Uh, In the month of June so far, he's got a 397 ERA. So that ERA is ticking up a little bit. He also has 13 walks, which is something that's not the case when you go back and look. It's twice the amount of walks that he had in the month of May. And that is significant. Now, Mm -hmm. is that a fatigue factor? Right. And we're still not even out of June. He's got a few more starts left to go in June. So he's already doubled that number. So perhaps it's a little bit of fatigue. 125 is his innings total in terms of like the cap that he's pitched so far in professional baseball. So you figure he should be good for somewhere around 145, somewhere in that range, right? You want to increase slowly. That's kind of what teams do nowadays. That's the theory behind things. So if I'm looking right now and I'm being honest with myself, Jared Jones might be at his very peak in terms of value. There might be more downside than upside the rest of the year. The hard part is saying, oh, this guy's been so good. I want to get rid of him. And what am I getting in return? That is an important thing. You have to ask yourself what that return is. And if the return doesn't present itself, then you stick with Jared Jones because he's got a little bit more left in the innings tank than the next guy we're going to talk about, which is Luis Heal. Now, you could argue Luis Heal has been as good as anybody in baseball this year, and you wouldn't be wrong. We did a whole segment on this show two weeks ago where I talked about his innings cap, which was 96 in 2019. It's been a very long time since this guy has crossed 90 innings, let alone 100, let alone at the big league level. 
and he got shellacked by the Orioles earlier this year, <laughs> uh, this week rather. Now, I'm not saying that this is the end of days because he had a bad start. A lot of good pitchers had bad starts this week. We talked about Imanaga. We talked about uh, off like, off camera. We were talking about Wheeler, Scuba. All those guys had rough outings this week, and Heal was one of those guys too. Could talk about a day game. Could talk about all the different reasons why some of the guys weren't good this week. But with Heal, again, he's at his zenith. He is at his peak. He is at a spot right now where it is nothing but downside potentially because he's not going to pitch to an ERA under two all year. Right. He is going to be a guy too that could potentially move to the bullpen or even get sent down and pitch every six day for three or four innings. That kind of stuff can crush you in the next couple months. So you have to be aware of it. And I don't know if this last outing is a warning sign or not, but Matt, to me, heel is a very dicey second half entity. And it's really tough because he's been so good. Where are you at? Are you just going to ride the wave until it crashes? Or are you somebody well, that is trying to get out of the boat? No, you make a really good point is how much more am I getting out of this? How good can this be for how long? If I can flip this for one of these players that we were talking about in an earlier segment that are ready to pop, that's how you win your league. This last name, though, is going to be controversial. So take it away. Look, I've been saying the whole time that the peak of the value of Garrett Cole was before he came back. Now, he came back, looked pretty good. I wouldn't say dominant necessarily, but pretty good. Like, not vintage Garrett Cole. I want to give him some slack. I know he's working his way back. It's the velocity that scares me a little bit with Cole, that being down a few miles an hour. And I know maybe I'm being nitpicky or whatever it is, but I keep going back to that same thing. Well, if the velocity is not normally where it is in the next start and the start after that, then I'm starting to worry about things. It's one thing to go out there and dominate double-A hitters when you're Garrett Cole, okay? He is that good of a pitcher. Same thing at the triple-A level. But now you're at the major league level. It's going to take a little bit extra. Garrett Cole name brand value is huge. I hearken back to the many, many times of watching Jacob, DeBr Jacob DeGrom come back and look good for a while, work his way back, dominate minor league hitters, have a few starts, and then go back to the IL or worse, end up having Tommy John surgery. Same thing just happened to Kyle Bradish. I do not wish this on Garrett Cole, but I'm concerned as an asset from a fantasy perspective of what Garrett Cole can give you the rest of the year. So see what you can get for him now that he's back. We return more baseball and football in hour two of FST. Your gut says Miami is going to win and you should take the over. Your gut also said your NFT selfies would only go up in value. They didn't. But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. There is going to be an energy to game time decisions that you will feel night in and night out. We're going to go through every single thing, and I've got a great team behind me that's going to help me get the job done. I want this to be the place that people come to. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. There is not going to be a better place, I promise you, than game time decisions. We will have everything at our disposal, and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsCrew. And it's going to be remembered. It will be a lasting image from the 2024 United States Open, just like Bryson DeChambeau's 55-yard bunker shot. We love big-time winners. Like, you win a championship, we want to hear from you. You get the stage. Sometimes it's emotional. It's a great watch. We know we also love the losers who said, you know what? I just can't believe I folded down the stretch. Let me face the music here. You sort of get a new light there. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. 